Yeah, my name is Dr. Michael Ryan. A trichologist is a subspeciality of dermatology where we deal with hair and skin issues primarily on the scalp, but hair grows all over the body, uh, apart from the lips and soles of the feet and palms of the hands, so we deal with all kinds of issues. Um, it's important to differentiate between two types of hair loss or three types of hair loss. There is androgenetic hair loss, which is uh, genetic based and it is what we commonly call baldness so male pattern baldness female pattern baldness that is genetic and you have to hered it's hereditary from somewhere down the line then there is female hair loss uh, which is a diffuse hair loss and that is the most common thing I see in, in Dubai that is not normal so that hair loss for females is not normal so it should be checked out there can be up to 50 reasons for it hormones diet vitamins, nutrients, illness, polycystic ovaries, diabetes, thyroid, and so on and so on. So for a female, she starts to shed the hair. Um, that is not a normal thing, so she, my best advice is to get that checked. For men that are thinning, genetic predisposition, all down to uh, male hormones, diet, uh, testosterone, which gets converted in the body to dihydrotestosterone, and then the hair becomes uh, progressively thinner, which we see from a very early age in most men, not all men. The myths in Dubai are that the water causes hair loss. No, it does not. The water cannot cause hair loss. Uh, the water quality here is, even though it's desalinated, is actually not bad. You actually do more harm to your hair, I think, if you start rinsing with bottled water, which could probably be more of a concern. Bottled water sits out at Jebel Ali in 54 degrees of heat all summer long. All sorts of things can leach through that plastic bottle, so that's an, interest, uh, an area of interest at the moment. Another myth, dandruff does not cause hair loss. Okay, dandruff is a separate dermatitis. It's a mild flaking, mild irritation. Very easily, uh, easy to manage. So it's very easy to manage that if you want, you've got the right uh, products, and some of the counter products, such as uh, clear, those will clear it up. Generally, if not, then you can go into a clinical preparation uh, for more severe cases. Oiling does absolutely nothing for the hair, okay? I know it's big with Indian culture and lots of uh, Indian ladies come here and they, they insist on oiling the hair. When you've got dark hair like Indian ladies have and generally long, when you oil it, it looks fantastic because it shines, it looks sensational. The trouble with oil is it has very little moisturising effect on the scalp. It has virtually no moisturising effect on the hair. Soon attracts dust and dirt and it soon smells. So the benefit of it is almost zero for your hair, but if you like to use it and you're Indian and it's part of your culture and your gran says you should use it, carry on. Uh, stress is, stress used to be the thing that everybody, doctors used to hang their hat on, that it was stress related uh, without any real scientific evidence. But recently we discovered that the brain talks to the hair follicle and the follicle now talks back. And at moments of high stress levels, there is something called substance P gets released, and this can cause this shedding of hair. Not a hair thinning, a hair shedding, which is a different thing. Uh, hair loss is the holy grail, and I wish I was rich, yeah. There, there are three things you can do with, with hair loss. There are, the first one is treatment, so depending on the cause of the, the hair loss. So if it is a man with early stage male pattern alopecia or male pattern baldness there are things we can use quite successfully to slow it down we can't actually stop it but we can slow it down those are usually topical solutions there is something on the market called Propecia which is was a product uh, devised by Merck that is originally for prostate hyperplasia but it has an effect on the dehydrotestosterone and it causes men to regrow their hair but it has significant side effects of a sexual nature so they are not advisable for young healthy productive males then we go on to um, surgical transportation trans transplantation which is permanent um, where they take hair from a donor area usually at the back of the head and remove it to the front that is permanent but you will still lose the original hair that is falling, so it's not a cure-all. Then there are things like hair restoration, which are fantastic. Uh, we do a lot of those here in the clinic where men that are bald, they have a hair system, uh, totally undetectable, 
and it raised the psychology, so the psychological effect of that on men is fantastic. They feel young again. And the new research, the, the question you asked really, will be stem cell. Now there are people in Dubai purporting to be doing stem cell surgery now and they are not. It is a lie. They are doing something called PRP where they take out some blood, they spin it around in a machine for 10 minutes and then they re-inject the blood back into your body after taking all the goodness out of it. So I'm not quite sure what the point of that is. But they're saying that uh, stem cell uh, treatment it is not. So you're just wasting thousands of dirhams on it. But eventually stem cell will be the way forward, but we're about, we're about 10 years away from that. Okay, well, certainly the most, the major cause of hair loss that I see in, in the clinic here are um, ladies that are deficient in iron, vitamin D, vitamin B, copper, zinc, all these things are due to diet, and especially Dubai life. So firstly, get those levels checked out, because they, they will undoubtedly be a contributing factor to your hair loss for females. For food, the most important meal for your hair is breakfast. For sure. The body is a, uh, demands energy when it wakes up. The hair is the second fastest growing thing in the body. So it needs this uh, surge of energy. So some protein and carbohydrates as breakfast is great. Eggs, even toasted marmalade, something to get the body fired up. Second most important is lunch. So a nice protein uh, inclusive lunch, salmon, beef, those kind of things. Chicken is okay, fish, shellfish green vegetables, uh, green leafy vegetables are iron rich, uh, legumes, uh, avocado, those kind of things are great. Evening meal for hair doesn't really matter for your hair. It's good for your health but not for your hair. Snacking during the day, snack on things like almonds, pumpkin seeds, fruits, they're pretty uh, pretty healthy for your hair. But you, essentially you, you are what you eat and for hair diet is crucial.